Her mother was a fanatic. I don't know how she lived with her. To believe something supernatural happened here defies logic and explanation. There's one thing no one seems to understand. She wasn't some monster. She was just a girl. What did you like about movie blood? I didn't like anything about movie blood. It was so sticky and uncomfortable, and I would stick to things, and I would get <laughs> lint on me. But it was fun. I mean, I think it looked cool. I think that's the best bit. When you're in the 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 bloody dress and stuff, are you sticky at that point? It's like imagine with maple syrup dried on a shirt, and it was all crackly like that. Mm -hmm. That's what the dress became. So we would have to wet it down, get me like soaking wet. It was disgusting. <laughs> You pray, little girl. Pray for forgiveness. Stephen King writes this tremendous backstory for her, where he talks about how Margaret is sort of considered an oddball in her own family. She was sort of marginalized within that, and she joins this religious cult and then finds them too, too liberal for her. So she and the man that she marries go leave and form their own religion where they kind of preach to each other. He dies. She doesn't even know she's pregnant. She thinks she has cancer, thinks she's dying, and then delivers a baby on her own. So that backstory right there kind of sets you up beautifully. The whole beginning sequence with Julianne Moore is like gonna be etched in my brain forever. Like I'll never be able to not see that in my head. <laughs> it's really disturbing and really good. Judy Greer said, "I thanks to Julianne, I will never think about that. <laughs> the same way. Yeah, Just yeah. Good. Well, you know, it is genre, though. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing. So you know how um, prom is next week? I was wondering if maybe you want to go with me. They're going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. Mama, stop. <laughs> Tell them you're not going. No. You're going to go to your closet and you're going to pray. Mama, I'm going. How do you think Carrie compares to classic horror villains? She's very much like Frankenstein, you know, who, think about it, the Frankenstein monster, I mean, it's one of my all-time favorite novels and movies. He's on the outside of the glass house, and what does he want? He just wants to come in and have friends and family. So that's what hit me about the King novel and about what we were trying to do. We all fell in love with this because it's just so relatable. What do you think happens? to everyone after this. I don't think uh, Miss D is teaching anymore. I'll say that. I imagine that she probably was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head on over to Enterprise Rent-A-Car and see if I can <laughs> be a sales representative for them. <laughs> I don't know if she would want to teach Jim anymore. Are you going to be signing up for the insurance today? Don't hurt me, Carrie. Why not? What do you think happens the town and everyone after. Uh, well, in the book, it's destroyed. Yeah. That's what's great about Stephen King. He makes the stakes so high, he doesn't let anybody get away with anything. This kind of isolation was occurring in plain sight. Everyone had an opportunity. Everyone had an opportunity to help or prevent it, and yet they didn't. And so Stephen King lets the whole town go down. You know, she just wants to get love and acceptance, and then she just wants to get justice and then she gets even. I think I'm gonna go by what Stephen King wrote. And I, I don't think, I think, that, I think that Carrie dies and goes to heaven with her mom. I love a good c conclusion, you yeah, know? Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I was like, she's not gonna be a zombie now, right? No, you couldn't. It'd be such sacrilegious. Stephen King would murder us. <laughs> with one of his powers that he wrote in one of his books. Yahoo!